Yes, it's been a while since I've been so lucky to have found these five boys. And it's a very, very welcome sight. I love the fact that they are lying in and amongst all these white flowers. Quite a scene. Now, interestingly, as we arrived onto the scene, there was a bit of a commotion going on. They were all kind of scrapping with one another, not too hectically, but they were having a little bit of argy-bargy and trying to work out who is the boss. It seems like they haven't quite done that yet, so they are being quite aggressive with one, one another quite often. Another interesting thing, possibly more interesting than the fact that they were fighting amongst one another, is that they've been calling. I think it's mainly just one of them that's been calling. But who knows why or what or who they are trying to call. It could be a lady nearby. That would make sense to me. Maybe they've heard another cheetah with their hearing, which is much better than ours. Hard to be certain. Since then, though, they've slumped down and gone back to sleep. But I'm told that they had a fairly quiet morning. They didn't get up to too much. They didn't hunt this morning. And there's a fair amount of wildebeest, none of which are in front of us, which will be too easy to see. But there is some game around for them to try and snack on wildebeest appears to be their favorite prey. Although I'm told while I was away for a week's break, they also snacked on one or two baby Thompson's gazelle, which is an easy opportunity for all the predators at the moment. Very good. Well, I hope you've been having a good time with Tristan and Taylor. Sorry we haven't been able to contribute too much to the safari up until now, but we had a long, long way to cover before we got here, and I wanted to make sure that I got into position as soon as possible, because it's usually any time from now that they can get up and start moving, and we would be, of course, want to be around for that. And I'm told you've been discussing poor old Taylor and her eye injury. I'm hoping her special cream that got flown in from Nairobi today um, is helping. I'm sure it will, and let's hope so, because it's no good having Taylor not operating at 100%. Poor lady. And it's quite interesting how it all happened, her eye injury, because it was quite of a delayed response, as I'm sure you've been told. And it was last night she was fine. She wasn't too worried last night, but she woke up this morning and she was certainly not in a good state. She's a little soldier, though. We all tried to convince her not to go out on morning drive, but she was not accepting no for an answer. And it's been great fun getting to know Taylor. I haven't, I didn't know her before she came up to the Mara. Most of the crew I know or knew from my years with Safari Live before I took a short year sabbatical. But she certainly is an absolute trooper and it's been wonderful to have her up in the Mara. Looks like this area's got some very good rain in the last few weeks because it's the most lush I've seen it. Hello, Philip. Um, you would like to know about cheetah mothers and the mistakes that they may make, I guess, when raising youngsters. And I'm not too sure. The reason being is I've never spent time with cheetah and their cubs, and the most I've ever spent time with cheetah has definitely been with these five individuals. We've invested a lot of time with them, and they've provided us with some incredible, incredible insight into what is going on with cheetah and especially with their interesting coalition. But, I mean, I guess, you know, the cubs are going to be most vulnerable when they're very young. And that's when any predator mother is going to be, have to be the most switched on. Choosing a den site, the appropriate den site, would be a very, very important one. One where there's not too much traffic of hyena and other predators as and where possible. And other than that, just making sure she gets herself meals so that so too can her kids get some nutrition. 
You may hear some interesting noises. I'm not sure if you are picking up the audio. There's some young tourists that are on safari, and it seems like singing is the thing to do for them at the moment. So they're having a good time, as are we. Everyone's happy. The cheetah clearly are not very affected or affected at all. They're also snoozing. And I wonder how long it'll take for them to get up. I always find it difficult to gauge how full-bellied they are because they are so slender and we haven't seen them up we haven't seen them up and about too much, but I think they could do with another meal this evening. Riti, you would like to know how far a cheetah's call travels in miles, and I've heard up to two miles, but I find that hard to believe because it's a very soft or relatively soft noise, but it is very high pitched. Um, I'm guessing a kilometer on a very still day, still day, or maybe a mile at the most, if you had very good hearing, not like me. I'm not, not very blessed when it comes to hearing. So I'd say about a mile or so. Anything more than that, I'd be very surprised if a human ear can pick up the audio. I guess it's going to be applicable for most wild animals. It's not just about how we can hear them, but rather how their own species can hear them. And that would be very interesting to know how far away cheetah can communicate with one another with these high-pitched chirps.